Hey, I'm Morgan from the very unofficial travel guides, and if you look very closely, you'll see behind me Oktoberfest. As you may or may not know, I live in Germany. I've lived here for over 20 years. I'm basically half German, I guess you could say. I've lived here for almost half of my life. However, the area that I live up in northern Germany isn't an uh, Oktoberfest area. But Morgan, what is Oktoberfest? The best way I can explain it to you, especially if you're American, is it's like a state fair. Germany has states just like the United States and each state has sort of its festivals, its fairs and Hamburg where I live also does have a fair which is similar to this but there is nothing quite like the Oktoberfest. The Oktoberfest is the biggest of all of them and of course it is world renowned. It happens once a year and it does not happen in October. It happens in September to signal the coming of October. I spontaneously decided to drive down here with some friends and uh, give you a little look around. So let's start by talking about getting here. First of all, if you're planning to go to Oktoberfest, you should plan your trip at least a year in advance because the hotels get totally booked out and they jack the rates way up. The friends that I drove down here with, they said that they almost stayed in an Airbnb, which is somebody renting out a mattress in the back of their van. That's how popular it gets. Otherwise, stay outside of the city and take the train in. If you get the train to the main station, it's really easy to get to the festival grounds. Just follow the tens of hundreds of thousands of people walking here. Entrance to the fair costs you nothing, but you might have to wait in line because as of this year, I guess, or maybe as of last year, they've started doing um, a bag control and you cannot take any large bags onto the festival ground. So you either have to leave them in your hotel, put them in a locker at the main station like I did, or don't take them with you at all. And I guess Oktoberfest would be then famous for two things, the crazy rides, and of course, the beer, the beer. The beer. Want to take a look at some? I know I do. There are many beer tents here, and I think if you've never seen the size of these beer tents, you can't really imagine how gigantic they are. And remember, these are portable. They are taken down and put up every year just for this festival. And if you think you're just gonna show up and walk into a tent and find a place at a table, you're wrong. You have to reserve months in advance and it's almost impossible to get a reservation. The only other way to do it is to get there really early in the morning and wait in line and hopefully you'll get a place at one of the tables in the non-reserved areas. Or be a pretty girl with great big in the back alleyway behind the main street of tents you'll find another famous thing at Oktoberfest. It has many names. You may call it the Hill of Shame, Pass Out Hill, whatever you want to call it, here it is. Okay, yeah, I understand. Sie sie machen nur ihr Job. So I just got told off by that bouncer with no teeth. He said uh, that they don't allow people to film the passed out people on Pass Out Hill. Oopsie doodles. What I was going to tell you is it's become a tradition and this is really gross, but at the end of the night, people go stand up at that fence at the top and they pee and the pee just runs down the hill. And so everybody who ends the night at Passed Out Hill doesn't only wake up feeling terrible, but they're also covered in pee. So don't end up on Passed Out Hill. If you do end up getting a place in one of the tents, you're going to have an amazing time. You're going to meet people from all over the world, singing, dancing, drinking. It's really an atmosphere like no other. Girls, when it's time to go to the bathroom, you better leave early because you're going to have to wait in lines. And men, if you're pee shy, you might have a problem. And I'll just leave it at that and when you get to Oktoberfest, you'll see what I mean. And eventually you get to the point where this happens. The sign says, because we're overfilled, unfortunately, we are closed. Getting here early is very important if you don't have a reservation. Also, contrary to popular belief, people don't walk around like this in Germany every day. This is a traditional costume, basically. And I think you could kind of compare it to like, um, like cowboys, you know, when you go to when you go to a rodeo, you'll see a lot of people wearing cowboy boots and cowboy hats and it 
cowboy belt with a cowboy buckle and those people probably don't usually walk around like that every day and this is a very similar thing to that a lot of these people will have pulled their things out of the closet and just put this on for their one visit to Oktoberfest and of course you don't have to wear this kind of stuff when you come to this celebration but it sure is fun if you do let's take a look at some of the food offerings We've got a schnitzel sandwich here. Some bratwurst. Mr. Cornhead? Ooh, there was some garlic butter happening there. Popcorn, candied almonds. Some crepes, or as Dino would say, crepes. All kinds of Liebherzkuchen. Look at all this goodness. Some steaks. Steak with onions, brats on the grill. This means sweet and fruity. We got some pretty nice looking fried fish here and some pretty gross looking fish sandwiches. Fried shrimp. Look, they have veggie burger and gluten-free stuff. Yes, more sausages. There are some very famous roller coasters that come here to Oktoberfest. This is one that's been here since I've started going here, the Double Wild Mouse or Wilde Maus. It is two versions of exactly the same ride. If you look at the lift tails in the middle and then left and right, it's the same ride. It's just uh, been mirrored. And I've seen at least four roller coasters here this year. And here it is, the big daddy of all fairground roller coasters, the Olympia Looping. Isn't this crazy? Look at this thing. It's enormous. It has five loops and it is completely portable. They take it apart and put it back together just like Legos. I am obsessed with this ride. I'm fascinated by the technology behind it. And when you consider it was built 30 years ago, I just think it's amazing. Look at this! An entire log flume. An entire log flume! They have some of the craziest mini Yuki rides here at Oktoberfest, like uh, that one behind me. I'm definitely not going to be riding that. Or this. Or that. Or this. Or that. No. I would ride that. Legos. I love these old school style ride through haunted houses. Look at Satan up there popping and locking. Yeah, get it boy. Yeah, yeah. I could do this. There's a cute little train ride here through all the gnomes. Oh, check out these old school style swings. Yeah. Look, they have looping ones too, but nobody's doing those. That would make me totally sick too. Ugh. Ew, I just stepped in that. If you want more information about traveling to Europe, to Germany, to Oktoberfest, or cruise ships, or Disney World, or all that other stuff that I usually report on, then be sure to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And special thanks, as always, to my VIPs at patreon.com slash verionofficial. Auf Wiedersehen! By the way, this water just cost me five euros. It is literally cheaper to drink beer.